welcome back to another video in this video we will be discussing on francis bacon's of followers and friends in his essay of followers and friends francis bacon discusses the need to be prudent and the need to be careful when selecting friends according to him our followers or our friends can be categorized into so many different categories some of which are costly followers factious followers glorious followers espials and virtuous followers by follower or friends he includes all kinds of people that we come into contact with it includes our relatives our colleagues our friends our classmates everyone we come into contact with the first category that he speaks about is the costly followers costly followers should not be liked by describing them as costly followers he does not necessarily mean those friends or those who always target us financially costly followers are not just those people who are always expecting us to spend money on them but he also means the people who strain us emotionally physically mentally who are always demanding contribution from us those kinds of followers are called costly followers and they should not be admired those are people in our lives who are always needy and always clingy the disadvantage of having this kind of people in our life is that they make our train longer and cut our wings shorter which means they ask you for one thing and then which leads on to another thing and then they want another thing from us and then another one and then they make that our train longer and by cutting our wings shorter he means that we hardly get any time to work for our own self those people are so selfish that they want 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 from us and they don't expect that we also have our own private lives we also have our own private individual aims to achieve thus they make our wings shorter by disallowing us to fly Francis Bacon says that true followers should not be like that. True followers are those people who encourage us, who help us to become better, who guide us to, um, who guide us to live a better life and also protect us from being harmed. Now the second category that he talks about are factious followers. Factious followers or factions, group or party followers they are even worse than costly followers because they befriend us only because we belong to the same party or we belong to the same faction or group they do not accept us for who we are but just because we follow the same leader as they do they are worse because once you change your party or once you change your leader they will automatically become your enemy and Bacon says that there are so many historical examples of uh, factious followers or factious friendship where they become friends because they belong to the same political party or same uh, faction or group. And then after the group breaks up, their friendship also breaks. So this kind of factious friendship happens a lot among great leaders. The third category is the glorious followers these are those friends or those followers who love to blow our trumpet that means those friends or followers who love to brag about us they love to speak about our achievements they love to speak about our honor this kind of friends or followers these glorious followers most of the time bring embarrassment to us because they have a problem of keeping secrets they love to speak about our honor they love to speak about our achievements and so they can hardly keep our secrets they speak about your goodness in the public and as a result they stir up jealousy and envy in the hearts of other people against us the next category of friends or followers are the espials espials as the name suggests they are the spies and they are very dangerous because they come to you and get your secrets and go to another party and spill your secret and get their secrets and then come back and tell you their secrets and unlike the glorious followers they are dangerous 
because their intention is evil. At least the glorious followers blow your trumpet, but then they don't have any evil uh, intention against you. But these spiles, they take your secret with the intention that they will spill your secret and get other people's secret. But ironically, they are greatly favored by people because these spiles are a very good way of gathering information of the other party. Though we know their true color, we favor them because we can get the information of the enemy party through him. The next category of followers are the virtuous followers. Virtuous means righteous, always going by rules and regulations, always obeying the law, religiously upright. We might think that, okay, they are virtuous people, good people, so they would be good at friendship or good as a follower. But Francis Bacon says, no, virtuous followers are righteous people who live by the law. They are like soldiers who are bonded by law and a set of rules and regulations that he must follow by hook or by crook. Virtuous people does not care about pleasing other people. They don't care about pleasing people. They don't care about popularity. Yes, it is nice to have friends who are truthful and honest and righteous, full of good virtues in them. But to be practical, he advises that it is better to take with the more passable than with the more able. Which means that it is better to be with a person with a more flexible personality than a rigid, staunch, virtuous follower. In the second paragraph, he tells about the government saying that in a government, it is good that you treat everyone equally. Why? Because if you treat some as more important than the others, they will take advantage. They will take advantage of the position that you give them, the power, the authority that you give them. And the others who are not given importance or who are not favored would be discontented with you and your leadership. And then they may claim that they deserve your favoritism too. So instead of favoring some and not favoring the others, favor everyone and favor them for different reasons and recognize their unique goodness because that will make them feel appreciated and valued. Apart from favoring everyone and uh, appreciating their uniqueness, it is good that you keep some selected friends, few carefully selected friends to guide you. That will make them feel officious or special volunteers to work by your side. This way, everyone would be happy in a government because everyone is favored. In the final paragraph, he talks about how first impression is not necessarily the last impression. He advises that it is not a good idea to trust a person too much from the first meeting itself. Because trusting one single person too much reveals your weakness. There is a high chance of trouble and scandal or even worse, destruction of your reputation and image. In the following lines, he says that it is not a good idea to be too close with someone of the lower rank. If you become too close to a person who is of lower rank than you, then they may have the guts, they may have the courage to speak to you boldly and hurt your ego or wound your honor. If you become too close to someone of the lower rank, they will have the courage to speak to you boldly and then they will forget their place and then speak carelessly to you and hurt your ego or hurt your honor. I guess that's the reason why many elder brothers don't like to mingle too much with their younger brothers because they want to maintain their ego, they want to keep their honor. Maybe that's why they don't want to mingle with their younger brothers or juniors. I've come across some people like that. I'm not generalizing, it might not happen to you or you may have never seen anyone like that or heard anything like that but but look opinions may be different and francis bacon in his essay says that these are some of the categories of friends and this is how life works you know we have different perspective francis bacon may have a totally different perspective than us 
So Beckham feels that it is bad to be vulnerable to one single person. To have one single best friend is dangerous. But then to have so many best friends who know you inside out, it is more dangerous. Because uh, if you ask them for their advices for one issue, they will give you the, their different opinions, which sounds like one is right, then you hear another one and then he sounds like he's right and that will continually make you change your mind and make you undecisive and they will make you land up in a confused situation the best and the safest way is to select carefully some few friends trustworthy friends and find confidence in them because lookers on many times see more than gamesters and the veil best discovered the hill, which means that the audience or spectators can see many times better than the person who is playing the game. And similarly, the person standing on the top of the hill will not see the proper view of the hill, but the one standing underneath the hill in the valley would have seen the whole view. Concluding his essay, he says that true friendship is a very rare thing and very hard to find, especially among people who are of equal rank. Because if two people are of equal rank and are friends, good friends, still there will be a sense of competition, a sense of who is getting more, a sense of who is getting better at anything. So people of the same rank, of the same class, can never be true friends, according to Francis Bacon. So in this essay, we find a lot of uh, really dark and shady opinion of Francis Bacon about friendship. He spilled out some really bitter truth philosophy of the nature of friendship among men. We feel jealousy, we feel hatred, we feel like backbiting, we feel like uh, hating other people or we feel like spilling other people's secret. Everyone has these flaws. No one is perfect. We're not angels. We're not gods. So we have these flaws in us. And the beauty of friendship comes out when we learn to overcome these flaws. When your friends learn to overcome these flaws and struggle to sacrifice for you. And we struggle to sacrifice for our friends. And only then does the true beauty of friendship comes out. Or else if we were robots who do nothing wrong, then there would be no beauty in the friendship. There will be no originality or there would be no emotions attached to it, whether good or bad. I hope this video helped you to understand the essay a little bit better. And stay positive and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.